אנו מכריזים בזאת על TEDx BGU I was born in Latvia that was part of Soviet Union until my parents, my sister and I moved to Israel at age of 11. We were placed in an absorption center with many immigrants from all around the world. It was sort of a tower of a, a Babel with people that speak many languages, different cultures. And then we moved to a less reputable neighborhood in Jerusalem where the tone was said by kind of people that today might, you might call criminals. Now, try to picture yourself <laughs> this well-educated, redhead geek, a result of typical Russian education, meeting the kids of local criminal families. Now, I knew that I would never want to become a bully, but I also knew that I have to find a way to fit among those kids. So I decided to leverage my hobbies and talents, which I knew that they will appreciate, mainly innovation, computer hacking, and especially lock picking. And I have to say that those same hobbies indeed kept me out of trouble. It's also helped me to become the type of a computer geek that today will be grabbed by two hands by the famous 8200 intelligence unit. But back then, because of my ability to see complex technology systems, and understand the big technology picture, I was actually uh, recruited by a top elite Air Force intelligence unit, but we'll not talk about it today. Let's just agree that it gave me a lot of skills, abilities, and experience that keep serving me until today. Now let's fast forward to the year 2010. Picture a meeting among the best minds from the US and Israeli top intelligence communities. The purpose of the meeting? how to stop, or at least to slow down the nuclear program of Iran. By the way, the assumption that this meeting actually took place is only based on media reports. Okay? But what we do know in retrospect is that some invisible hand infected the nuclear, the Siemens centrifuges and nuclear facility in Iran with a very sophisticated virus whose sole purpose was to change the speed of the centrifuges so they will stop and reach uranium. By the way, the entire facility was totally isolated from the internet, off the grid, or what we call air gapped. So the virus had to be autonomous and have its own intelligence. Now, the results of the creating minds in that meeting set a historical precedent, because bad guys were watching and learning. And this episode represents a clear example of how technology changed the entire world of physical crime and terrorist attacks. A few years later, this understanding triggered a similar episode, an episode that many European banks and law enforcement agencies would like to forget. The headlines was explicit. Cobalt groups steals hundreds of millions of dollars from ATMs across Europe. What happened is that using a signal what is a, which was agreed in upon in advance, ATMs started to eject cash in hands of people that were waiting to receive this cash. Now, those people knew that that's what's going to happen, and still they couldn't believe when I actually see cash coming out of the ATMs. Now, I'm not talking, by the way, about people who were waiting near the ATM to get the salary that will allow them to survive yet another week. I'm talking about a big criminal gang hired by hackers who activated those ATMs from the remote. Each collection team had a suitable luggage to collect tens of thousands of euros coming from multiple ATMs. The collection process, by the way, took only a few minutes. And then they disappeared some people began to call it the new model for organized criminal crime. Now, I know that it sounds like a good thrill, a start of a good thriller, right? So yes, many bank CEOs thought the same. Until in July 2016, their worst nightmares became true. According to Europol report, there are over 3 million ATMs in the world, which makes this business a very lucrative business for criminals. 
By the way, how many of you have seen ATM from the inside? So I decided to show you one. That's a typical ATM. And as you can see, the money is in the safe. By the way, that's how each and every ATM looks like. The money is in the safe. Very difficult to break into this safe. But the computer that is controlling the motor inside the safe is actually very easy accessible, either from remote or by using master key that is just a simple key. And what hackers found that if you hack into the brain of the ATM, you can actually ask this brain to send commands to the motor. And each time you type on your keyboard, a bill comes out of the ATM. By the way, there is a small camera here. It's very easy to shut the camera down, so nobody will know that it ever happened. So using the new commercialized cyber weaponry, you actually don't need to break the ATM safe anymore. So the world of organized crime has changed forever. Remember this kid that was back in Jerusalem? That time, in order to steal money from a bank, you were supposed to source for a weapon, break into the branch of a bank, threaten the employees, and be in risk or have, and having the risk of being injured or even caught. Today, bad guys don't try to break into the branch of a bank anymore and shoot in there. Today, it's much easier to deploy a computer with some kind of intelligence that will steal only one dollar from your bank account, but will do it tens of millions of times in a row. That's what computers are good at. Well, let's take a look at another example, money laundering and terrorist funding, which becomes one of the greatest threats to banks and regulators. Money laundering today done the same way. Computer, residing in a totally different country, using artificial intelligence, sent commands to move funds between accounts in a bank in a way that existing systems and humans will not be able to identify. This day, in order to conduct a massive Financial crime, all you need is a computer connected to the internet and some kind of intelligence. Since my early days, I had the privilege to manage successful startup companies. And today, I'm managing a company called Thetaray, I believe one of the most exciting ones, where we spearhead the use of artificial intelligence to fight with financial crime and attacks on critical infrastructure. We have developed an artificial intelligence that allows the system to learn and adapt itself to the threats, and the system is built on principles of big data analytics, ability to analyze hyperdimensional data from many different sources, and very effective algorithms that allow to detect threats with very high precision, but with very low level of false alarms. This method of effective machine learning is based on the principle of uncovering the unknown unknowns. Sometimes in mathematics, we call it unsupervised learning. Now, let's take a look back on the money laundry or terrorist funding. Until now, money laundering scheme was only be able to identify when crime was conducted and money has left the bank. Today, with our new technology, based on artificial intelligence, we can actually identify innocent movements of funds, or allegedly innocent movements of funds, within accounts in a bank. And in many cases, our technology detects money laundry 70 days before an actual attempt to conduct a crime and take the money out of the bank. Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? These systems work on a daily basis in the largest and leading banks in the world and helps to protect those banks against crimes such as terrorist funding, money laundry, and human trafficking financing. So many people ask what AI is, and when people ask me, what is AI? I actually love to quote uh, Marvin Minsky, who once said, artificial intelligence is the science of making computers to do things that if human beings will do them, will require intelligence. Artificial intelligence is not some passing phenomena. It affects and will continue to affect upon various industries, financial institutions, government organizations, industrial, transportation, aviation, warfare, you name it. For example, computer doctor today can provide you second opinion. Watson systems can analyze huge amount of data and suggest you a different treatment. Gaming, I don't know if you know, but today the world champion of chess is a computer, as well as the world champion of ancient game of Go, Chinese ancient game of Go. 
Of course, personal assistants and speech recognition systems, Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, uh, Apple Siri, facial recognition systems, autonomous vehicles, weapons, and more and more. There are many things people call AI. Classic AI can be compared to cognitive systems. Once they identify a pattern of behavior or activity, they are able to use analytic abilities that imitate human brain to propose you an action. But this type of AI is not good enough to identify unknown threats, unexpected events, or detect the unknown unknowns, in other words. But if you think about it, that's where the real danger is. For example, let's take classic AI systems. You can today teach the systems how to identify a rabbit. And then it will identify all the types of rabbits of different, different types and shapes and forms. But if you expect the system to identify a snake, it will not be able to do it because nobody taught it how to identify a snake. Of course, you can tell the system, look, we'll train you to alert any time there is anything other than a rabbit. But then we'll have millions of false alarms and we'll not be able to distinguish between a real threat and a fake one. So the next generation of AI systems simulate the activity of, en of the ancient part of human brain, which is responsible for primary impuls impulses, absorbing the data from our visual and auditory systems, and then telling different organs in our body how to behave. There's a new artificial intelligence paradigm developing. Computers adopt human traits. We are eventually speaking of a new generation of artificial intelligence systems, which are learning independently, like a child, to define danger or identify danger without previously knowing what they're looking for. This ability to identify strange behavior, by the way, is very intuitive and easy for us humans. For example, when you drive a car and you suddenly hear a strange noise, most of us, even people without any mechanical training, will be able to identify that something wrong is going on. The next generation of AI is similar to a very sensitive ear that will use common sense to identify that something wrong is going on. In a way, we provide machines with human characteristics, such as feelings or gut feelings, intuition, and common sense, which basically makes those machines really look similar to us. Now, AI pervades all areas of our lives. Some of us might find it very threatening. Many others will see and understand the potential of taking human abilities and introducing them into computer systems. Very soon, we will see many devices communicating with each other. Very soon, we will see connected autonomous cars that in order to Optimized traffic will have to learn how to communicate with each other. But today, autonomous cars or IoT devices, Internet of Things devices, communicate using languages that we human beings taught them. We call it protocols. Not very efficient. Very soon, those machines will develop their own language that will be much more efficient. But of course, we humans will not be able to understand it anymore. In mid-2017, Something amazing, or something very happened, depending on who you ask, happened. Facebook shut down its artificial intelligence lab because they suspected that the computers started to communicate with each other in a way that Facebook engineers couldn't understand anymore. This raises a significant question to us. Should we fear artificial intelligence in terms of announcers? Leading names of the industry claim that we are heading towards Armageddon, chaos, where autonomous systems will operate beyond our control, where we will not be able to understand or trust them, and they will bring the end of the world. My answer is different. I think that in order to avoid this doomsday, we must prepare ourselves in advance. We must harness the power of machines to help us so we can control and manage our own values in the age of smart machines. Now, let's face it, every new technology brings with it its own set of fears of the unknown. Let me give a few examples. With early commercializations of cars, 
people predicted the destruction of a family unit. When telephones were brought to the market, for those of you who remember, <laughs> people predicted the end of cultural debate. At some point, even the print led people to fear the decline of memory. I remember when I took place in building the first and the largest internet service provider, many people darkly predicted the extinction of human interaction as we know it. Yes, there are some small truths hidden among those disturbing predictions. But this technology has mainly contributed to expanding our human experience, increasing our capabilities and deepening our development. We are committed to take immune experience even further. The new class of smart machines is arising. Machines that will be bred, trained and educated to act as digital guards, helping us to protect ourselves. We should not be afraid to create an artificial intelligence, because if done right, it will build upon our own values. And by the way, according to my experience, in the world of technology developments, good guys always win. <laughs> so don't worry, human race will survive. Having said that, we do have a responsibility. In this new world of smart machines, interacting with each other, we, humans, must utilize the power of machines to help us to protect ourselves. We all have to do it. And I have to tell you that I'm very privileged to take part in making this world of connecting humans and machines much, much safer. Thank you.